Hello viewers, for DIYers here with another video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be showing you how to make your own fuel transfer pump. I have found some versions available online. However, after reading the views, I don't want to be stuck with a poor product, which will quit after a couple months of usage. I need the fuel transfer pump as I can no longer fill up the boat with straight gas at the marine pumps. I am required to fill the tank with a gas and oil mixture as I did an oil injection delete. Also trying to fill the tank with a 20 liter or 5 gallon fuel can hanging over the edge of the boat isn't exactly the easiest either. This boat does stay in the water in the warmer months. Some of these parts are purchased from Amazon, others I had laying around at home. I'll include a part list with the links in the video description to Amazon, these will be affiliated links. First for the fuel pump, this is a low pressure pump that operates off 12 volts. It comes with all the required fittings and hose clamps. Next was a rotary switch. I had this laying around and it was originally intended for a light. The switch will fit nicely onto the wire without creating anything bulky. It's important that the switch does match or exceed the amperage draw of the fuel pump. And off to the right is the extension 12 volt cigarette lighter wire. I will be cutting off the female end and reusing the male end. First was stripping the wires of the fuel pump. The fuel pump only has two wires. The black is the ground and the brown is the power. The connector was then cut off the cigarette lighter wire. Both wires are the same color on the cigarette lighter. Using a multimeter I was able to determine which is the ground and which is the power. The center pin is the power and the outer contacts are the ground for the cigarette lighter plug. This is done by using a continuity test. Then was stripping back the wires. Heat shrink was then installed onto both the ground and power wires. The wires are then twisted together and soldered. If you are looking for a tutorial on how to solder wires, I do have a video for this. Allow the soldered connections to cool down before applying heat shrink. Not doing so can have the heat shrink prematurely shrink around the connection making the installation difficult. After that was using a heat gun for the heat shrink. For this I'm using my OEM Tools 24498 dual temperature heat gun. This has stood the test of time with my various projects. Comes in a blow mold case to keep everything neatly packed with various attachments. Rated at 1500 watts and is able to reach a temperature up to 450 degrees Celsius or 842 degrees Fahrenheit. A link to this will be included in the video description to Mobile Distributor Supply. For the switch installation I had to separate the molded wires using a razor knife. Be extremely careful when doing this, as you don't want to pierce the insulation on the wire, which can cause a short. Using a screwdriver, the switch is then disassembled. One wire will be routed in the case, and the other one will be routed on the switched portion. The power wire will need to be clipped so it does have a broken connection, and the switch will fully control this part of the circuit. I have found installing the wires in the opposite portion of the case is far easier than installing it on the wheel portion. After that is putting the case back together and ensuring those wires are properly seated. I also installed an extension for this wire so I was able to reach the cigarette lighter port in my cuddy cabin. Again the insulation was stripped back, the wires were then soldered, and then heat shrink was applied. The hose barb fittings already had sealant applied to the threads. Hose sizes may vary based on what type of fittings are being used with the fuel pump. A single ear clamp is used and that is crimped into place. Again the size of that clamp will vary based on the size of hose. I prefer these style of clamps as they are a cleaner look and don't have any sharp edges as opposed to a gear clamp. This will be a suction line so a brass sintered filter is installed on the end with the hose barb. This also has a hose clamp applied. To determine which is the suction and which is the supply end, this should be printed on the side of the fuel pump casing. The larger supply line is then installed. This will be longer so it needs to be able to reach the fuel tank filler area. Once done, here's a quick test using the fuel can while being hooked up to the cigarette lighter in the vehicle.
and now for a test on the boat. As you can see I do have the wiring running into the cuddy cabin. I can turn the pump on or off using that rotary switch. I have the suction line installed on the fuel tank with a filter so it doesn't pick up any chance of debris. And then the filler line is inserted into the gas cap area. It does take a few minutes to fully empty this tank. New videos released every week on this channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's a huge help to me and leave a comment below if you found the story helpful. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to also hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.